And now um, let's let's take a few questions from the press here. Uh, especially, we'd like to start with the local P Pennsylvania press if we have some. Uh, and again, you can ask a question to me or any of my colleagues standing up here. Thank you all. Uh, there's that that you've agreed to uh, a debate uh, on October 1st, and you're calling for additional debates. Can you explain uh, what do you hope to get out of those additional debates? Well, it's not really what I hope to get out of these additional debates. It's what the American people deserve to get out of seeing the people who want to be their vice president actually debate. I, I, I just, you know, maybe I'm old fashioned, but as the person who's asking the American people for the awesome honor and responsibility of being their vice president, I think I ought to have to go before the American people and make the case for why I deserve to have that job. And I think it's disgraceful that Tim Walls and Kamala Harris are running from every media interview, running from every reporter. They refuse to respect the American people enough to stand before them and actually ask them for their vote. So I think we ought to do as many debates as we possibly can. I know the president, President Trump has invited Kamala Harris to do three debates. She's only agreed to one. Uh, Tim Waltz, I guess we agreed to do a debate on October 1st, but CNN, not exactly friendly to me, much more left wing than almost any other media station. CNN wants to do a debate in mid-September. And I said, yes, absolutely, because the American people deserve it. And one. Just one, one final point about this. Look, the Harris campaign is not running a political campaign. They're trying to produce a movie. She never stands before the American people without a script. She never talks to voters unless a teleprompter is right in the middle of them. This is not a person who we should trust to sit in a private room with Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin and the leaders of America's, whether they're adversaries or friends. If you are afraid of a friendly media and the media has been very friendly to Kamala Harris, then how can we possibly trust you to represent us on the world stage? The answer is we can't, which is why we ought to fire Kamala Harris, not give her a Promotion. <laughs> Ma'am. Uh, I, I wanted to ask what rules and stipulations did you advocate for within these VP debates? So we, I, I'll be honest with you, I first heard about these debates, both of them, yesterday. I imagine my staff was talking to CBS and to CNN before that. We really didn't ask or require much. We just wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity to do a real exchange of views. That was my only directive. And I told my staff, agree to whatever we have to agree to, because I think it's important, again, that you stand before the American people and actually ask for their vote, not just pretend it's going to be given to you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> any, other local, any other local reporters? Sir. Spent a lot of time in Breton County, including Jackson, where of course you spent so much time for women. Sure. Kind of this, kind of people have ever met, I'll add. But it's also a region that, as I learned, has a lot of people who rely on government assistance. You were talking yesterday about how much you don't like the handouts. So my question is, under a second Trump administration, what programs could those families expect to be cut, and what would be done to make sure that they can stay on their feet? Well, look, I know a lot of people, and I grew up with a lot of people, including in my own family, who had to rely on government assistance from time to time. We don't criticize anybody for actually relying on assistance when they're down on their luck and they need it. What we do criticize is a government that has chosen to provide handouts instead of good job opportunities for American citizens. I think that... Because, look, fu fundamentally... And again, I say this having known a lot of people who have required these programs to put food on the table. Fundamentally, if you are depending on the government, the government is always going to be able to control you in a certain way. Whereas if you are depending on a good job and an economy that's growing for everybody, then you are, no one is your master. You are your own master. And I think that's the vision of this country that we should have, is that every single person controls their own destiny, writes their own ticket. But look... You know, you mentioned absolutely, Breathitt County, Kentucky is one of the poorest counties in the entire United States of America. We've seen a lot of economic opportunity decline in places like Breathitt County and places like Western Pennsylvania. Why? Well, for a whole host of stupid policies that our leaders have put in place. I mean, you have a president, Kamala Harris, vice, she's the acting president, I guess, because we all know Joe Biden isn't home, but acting, acting president Kamala Harris, 
who would rather buy oil and gas from Iran and Russia, tin pot dictators all over the world, than from energy workers right here in Western PA. Let's buy it from our own people. We got plenty of it in Western Pennsylvania. Let's allow these guys to get it out of the ground. But when, but when you, but when you do that, when you do that and you create economic opportunity for people, you bring down the cost of manufacturing, you make it easier for moms and dads to heat their homes on a cold winter night, you create the kind of prosperity and the kind of independence that we want to create. When you destroy economic opportunity, you fundamentally are creating people who are not able to stand on their own two feet. That's not what any of us want. I want everybody to be able to stand on their own two feet, but they're not going to be able to do it if Kamala Harris is dedicated to destroying the energy and manufacturing economy of Western Pennsylvania and the whole country. And that's what she's done. Final point I want to say on this is, look, Kamala Harris has fallen in love with the green economy. You hear her talk about it all the time. It's the entire foundation of their economic policy agenda. What did Kamala Harris cast the deciding vote to do? To ship a lot of American tax dollars to buy electric vehicles that are made in China. Why don't we keep American tax dollars here at home? Why don't we build factories here in the United States of America? And if we're going to subsidize anything, let's subsidize the products that are built and made in America, not in communist China. Thank you all. Any other? Any? That's right. That's exactly right. You ought to be up here answering questions, sir. Where? Any other PA reporters? Then we'll do a couple nationals too. Yes, sir. Um, sorry, uh, I'm Ryan. It's for Tribune Review. Uh, just kind of wondering, um, could you maybe elaborate a little bit more on some of the benefits or policies that would benefit, um, you know, veterans here, and really how that contrasts with your public? Yeah, well, look, the first and most important thing is we, we all love the VA here. And 90%, 95% of the people who work at the VA are really good and solid people. But if you have people, and every bunch has a few bad apples, who are not doing their job, who are not responding to veterans' phone calls, you've got to be able to fire those people because they drag down the many good employees at the VA. One of the things... Thank you. But one of the things that President Trump did is he made the VA more efficient by empowering the people who were doing the good jobs and, and, and disempowering and sometimes firing the people who weren't doing good by our veterans. You've got to do that to make the VA actually function. Uh, you, you, you can't have any agency that, ref, that, that, that can't serve its own people, and the way to do that is to make sure it has the highest quality people. We want the highest quality people in the VA. We've got a lot of them. We ought to promote them, give them benefits, give them raises. The people who aren't doing their job, they ought to get out and do something else. That's, that's, that's number one. The, the, the second thing is for, I mean, look. I, I was in the Marine Corps from 03 to 07, so I remember when I got out of the Marines, and it was my, the VA was my main source of health care uh, for, for at least a few years. The main complaint that you heard back then from veterans was, we just don't have enough choices, especially if you're in a rural area where the closest hospital is an hour and a half away, the closest VA medical center is an hour and a half away. You've got to give those people choice to get health care in their local communities. Donald Trump accomplished that in a big and profound way. He gave veterans choice, and Kamala Harris has been trying to undo it. In fact, Tim Waltz, the person she selected because he was a veteran, to say nothing about his service record, Tim Walz actually opposed the legislation that gave veterans more access to health care, more choice in their health care. I think we ought to be giving veterans more choice in their health care, and if we do, that's how we stay faithful to the promises we made to them. Any, any, any more local PA? Ma'am. Olivia Bosser, WTHA News. And speaking with a lot of the veterans in our community, one thing that they tell us is that they are working in minimum wage jobs because Absolutely. they want to get their education on the battlefield instead of in a college. How do you plan to address the minimum wage um, in this country to help avoid wage disparity? So it's a great question. I, I think, that, again, that the best way to promote rising wages among all of our citizens, veteran or not, is we've got to have labor markets that are tight. And one of the reasons why we have so many people scraping by on minimum wage jobs is that Kamala Harris has let in 20 million illegal aliens to undercut the wages of American workers. Get them out of here and give a pay raise to American citizens, not to illegal aliens. 
But I, but I, I want to address something, because he touched on something that's really important, which is the education component of this. And as all of us know, I mean, look, I, I joined right out of high school, and I went to college afterwards, but we have served with a lot of very smart Master sergeants and first sergeants and sergeant majors and command sergeant majors. Not Tim Waltz, of course. He's not really a command sergeant major. He just pretends to be one on TV. But real people who do not have a college degree and have more real-world experience and more real-world education than anybody who got a four-year you know, degree in, in basket weaving from a university. So we actually, I think, need to make it easier for veterans, and President Trump and I have plans to do exactly this, for the education that veterans get on the battlefield in their, in their training to translate to the job market on the civilian world. And we do that, and I think that, one, we stop discriminating against people who didn't go to college, but we actually promote the skills formation, skills recognition in our veterans. That'll help raise their wages more than almost any government program. So why, 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 don't, why, why don't we take just a couple more questions, and maybe we can, we can take some from the national folks, too. Taylor, just tell, who, who should I? It's bright out there. It's hard to see everybody's faces. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Alan Fernandez with NBC News. Thank you, sir. Uh, you made a comment in the speech at the Claremont Institute in 2021. Uh, you said oh, here we go. Well, sometimes the evidence to support it is what people actually say. And look, I, I really do believe that we have to be more pro-family in this country. And I do think, I mean, look, I, I um. I mean, let, 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 me, let, let, me, let me give you personal experience. So my, my, my lovely wife is here. There's Usha. Sorry to embarrass you, honey. But isn't she beautiful, guys? You see her at the RNC convention. She did such a good job. But look, my, my wife is a brilliant litigator. She's a brilliant lawyer. We met in law school, and she's had an incredible career. But I think both of us would say, and I, I feel comfortable speaking for my wife here, that very often corporate America is not especially friendly to parents with young children, especially young moms with young children. And I think that we have to promote a culture of pro-family thinking and pro-family policy in this country where we see children as, natural, as, as blessings and as resources and not as curses, which is how I think way too many companies and frankly way too many uh, of our leaders in Washington think about our young children. So I, I would very much like for our young moms and our young dads to be able to have whatever family they want to have and for them to not feel like it's going to ruin their career or ruin their future, we should be encouraging young moms and dads to bring life into the world. And I think there are a whole host of ways in which we prevent them from doing it, and that's got to change. And I'll do, I'll, I'll do one more, ma'am, maybe right, right there in the middle. Look, I, I, <laughs> I find this question so funny because Kamala Harris has let in 20 million illegal aliens, and I'm not criticizing you to be clear, but Kamala Harris has let in and allowed 20 million, it's probably more like 25 or 30 million illegal aliens into this country. And people always say, well, isn't it really difficult logistically to get all these illegal immigrants out of the country? Well, first of all, the first thing you have to do is stop the bleeding, right? Kamala Harris suspended deportations on day one. She stopped Donald Trump's Remain in Mexico policy. If you want to get serious about reducing illegal immigration, immigration in this country, is got to stop people from coming in at the record numbers they have been coming in since Kamala Harris became the border czar. So we got to start there, stop the bleeding. The second thing is, okay, well, now that we've gotten illegal immigration as close to zero as physically possible, what are you and Tr President Trump going to do about the 20 million illegal aliens who are here? And I think of it as kind of like somebody asking me, well, that's a really big sandwich. It's 10 times the size of your mouth. How are you possibly going to eat the whole thing? And it's, well, you take the first bite, and then you take the second bite, and then you take the third bite. And that's how you approach the 20 million illegal aliens who are here, is you say, look, you say, let's start with the first million who are the most violent criminals, who are the most aggressive. Get them out of here first. Prioritize them. 
And then you see where you are, and you keep on taking bites of the problem until you get illegal immigration to a serviceable point. Now, you ask about using the National Guard. Look, I don't know that you need to use the National Guard, but we are going to use every law enforcement tool at our disposal to get illegal immigration under control. That is the most important promise that we will make on this campaign. We're going to get illegal immigration under control. We're going to make groceries and housing most affordable. And by the way, we have a vision to do it. We actually have the plans, we have the policies to accomplish this stuff. That's a big thing that sets us apart from Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. All right, so that's the last question we'll take. Um, and I, I, let me just say a, a word of gratitude to all of you. In, in, incredible to come here um, in the middle of the day in Western PA and have such a lively, enthusiastic, and wonderful crowd. I wish I could visit with every single one of you, but let me, let me just say here that you guys... The people in this room are what make this country great. And there is nothing that we cannot do as a nation. We've got the best workers. We've got the best people. We've got the most beautiful country and the best natural resources. The only thing that we need to unleash America's incredible spirit is to get some leaders who are actually fit to lead this incredible country of ours. You guys are why we do this. God bless you and thank you for having me. See you all later. Uh -huh.